Every day, we all make transactions across a variety of verticals. As we make those transactions, though, revenue gets funneled towards certain dominant players per vertical. So in mobility, Uber, hotels, Expedia, um, all types of products and services, Amazon. So as we make these transactions, that revenue goes to these dominant players and does not have a pathway or incentive to divert that value back into our local communities. Let me give you an example, and maybe even some numbers that highlight how much money we're actually talking about. So we all have a wonderful bookstore in our hometowns. I know I do, and I'm sure you do as well. Um, look at the bookstore, and you'll find it on Google, I'm sure. Google the book you're looking for, and you'll find it on Amazon. So a couple things happen there. You, wanted, you identified something that you wanted in your city, but the product actually came from a place not in your city. It's coming from a place far away. And as you made that transaction, in this case, 22% of the transaction left your local economy. So let's say you spent $10 on a book, $2.20 are just gone. Imagine a thousand people did that just in a week, which is not uncommon. You're talking about a tremendous amount of money. But let's say you're a visitor. Um, you want to book a hotel. Um, let's say the hotel room downtown or down the street from you is $100 tonight. So when you book it on Expedia, 40% goes to Expedia. So out of the $100, the hotel owner only collects $60. So that's $40 per room per night that leaves your local economy and will not come back. Now imagine just 10 people booked a hotel in your city tonight. That's $400. Imagine 100 people, not uncommon. So what happens there is that the hotel owner now has less money to fund opportunities that they wish they could take advantage of. So for example, maybe they want to expand the pool area or paint the lobby. If you don't keep money in the system, you can't fund opportunity and you can't hire people that have the skills within your city and the productive capacity to do it because there's simply no money to fund it. And another, whether you be a resident or a city, uh, many of us have taken either Uber or Lyft or some form of a, a car share um, in uh, various cities around the world. But also think about what's happening there. You get into a car and we need Uber to establish trust between ourselves and the driver. In return for, for being that middle middleman, Uber takes up to 30% in some cases, I'm sure we're all familiar with surge pricing, up to 50%. So let's say you take a um, something simple, like a $10 ride from point A to point B. The driver is actually only collecting, uh, it's in some cases, $5. Um, so that means $5 leaves the local economy per ride and goes to San Francisco, where Uber is headquartered. So the point is that when you keep more money in the local economy, you improve the velocity of money, which means more money can be used within the system where the hotel owner is hiring a painter, the painter is ordering more paint, um, and all of a sudden that money is circulating locally and more abundance is being created as a result. So what can we do about it? The main call to action here is make people aware of the activities that they're engaging in. When they book a hotel online, when they buy a product on Amazon, when they take the Uber that they get from point A to point B, just make more people aware of the economic result of those activities. And as you create more awareness, you invite more people and a like-minded, mission-aligned audience to help support our cause in helping keep more funds in the local economy and creating a construct where it's a better win-win after the click across a variety of verticals, lodging, retail, restaurants, and services. Thank you.